Welcome to video 4 for this unit on linear equations, inequalities, and systems. In this video, we're going to focus on equations and their graphs. Linear equations can be written in different forms. Some forms allow us to better see the relationship between quantities, or to predict the graph of the equation. Suppose an athlete wishes to burn 700 calories a day by running and swimming. He burns 17.5 calories per minute of running and 12.5 calories per minute of freestyle swimming. Let x represent the number of minutes of running and y the number of minutes of swimming to represent the combination of running and swimming that would allow him to burn 700 calories. We can write the equation 17.5 X plus 12.5 Y equals 700. We can reason that the more minutes he runs, the fewer minutes he has to swim to meet his goal. In other words, as X increases, Y decreases. If we graph the equation, the line will slant down from left to right. Here is a graph of the equation. How does the equation relate to the graph? The values where the line intersects the vertical and horizontal axes, 56 and 40, are not in the equation, but we can reason about where they come from. If x is zero, the athlete does not run, he would need to swim for 56 minutes to burn 700 calories because 12.5 times 56 equals 700. If y is 0, the athlete does not swim, he would need to run for 40 minutes because 17.5 times 40 is 700. What about the slope of this graph? We can compute it from the graph, but it is not shown in the equation 17.5x plus 12.5y equals 700. If the athlete wants to know how many minutes he would need to swim if he runs for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes, he can substitute each of these values for x in the equation and find y. Or he can first solve the equation for y. Or y equals 56 minus 1.4x. Notice that y equals 56 minus 1.4x or y equals negative 1.4x plus 56 is written in slope-intercept form. The first equation we wrote, 17.5x plus 12.5y equals 700, is a linear equation in standard form. In general, it is expressed as ax plus by equals c, where x and y are variables, and a, b, and c are numbers. When we solve the equation for y, we have an equivalent equation in slope-intercept form. How does this equation relate to the graph? The coefficient of x, negative 1.4, is the slope of the graph. It means that as x increases by 1, y falls by 1.4. For every additional minute of running, the athlete can swim 1.4 fewer minutes. The constant term, 56, tells us where the graph intersects the y-axis. It tells us the number of minutes the athlete would need to swim if he does no running. Now let's look at a different type of situation. A costume designer needs some silver and gold thread for the costumes for a school play. She needs a total of 240 yards. At a store that sells thread by the yard, silver thread costs 4 cents a yard and gold thread costs 7 cents a yard. The designer has $15 to spend on the thread. How many of each color should she get? if she is buying exactly what is needed and spending all of her budget. The situation involves two quantities, silver thread and gold thread. 
and two constraints, length and cost. Answering the question means finding a pair of values that meets both constraints simultaneously. To do so, we can write two equations and graph them on the same coordinate plane. Let x represent yards of silver thread and y represent yards of gold thread. The length constraint can be represented by the equation x plus y equals 240. The cost constraint can be represented by the equation 0.04x plus 0.07y equals 15. Here are the graphs of the two constraint equations. Every point on the graph of x plus y equals 240 is a pair of values that meets the length constraint. Every point on the graph of 0.04x plus 0.07y equals 15 is a pair of values that meets the cost constraint. The point where the two graphs intersect gives the pair of values that meets both constraints. That point is 60, 180, which represents 60 yards of silver thread and 180 yards of gold thread. Let's substitute. 60 for x and 180 for y in each equation. We find that these values make the equations true. 60 comma 180 is a solution to both equations simultaneously. A system of equations consists of two or more equations that represent the constraints in the same situation. A curly bracket is often used to indicate a system. The solution to a system of equations is a pair of values that makes all of the equations in the system true. Graphing the equations is one way to find the solution to a system of equations. Thank you for watching video 4 of 7 for this unit on linear equations, inequalities, and systems.